Hey everyone. Good morning. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. Oh, let's see. Oh boy, I've been going all day, all night. Last night had a great time in downtown Peabody at a shop called Create and Escape with the resident artist Pascal and also um, Wendy, the owner, and a bunch of my friends from Culture House. So we had a really good time and um, we fundraised quite a bit as a result, which is great. And good morning, Shelly. And this morning, though it's rainy a little bit, I got my light on and, um, hey, are you into, hey, dog is into stuff. It's a typical morning here at Cricket Chat. Good morning, good morning to everyone. Dog is getting into stuff. As soon as I go live, they like take it as an opportunity to get into stuff. Hey, you, get out of there, no. Come here, come here, Peagle boy. So, um, this morning, on this rainy spring morning, one of the last days of, is it the, it's Thursday, so second to last day of April, I cannot believe it's going to be May in two days, and um, this is just flying, flying by. I thought that we would work on some more flower projects. Hi, Matt, um, and good morning, Emmy. <laughs> Cricket Chat Crafters. That's a mouthful. Um, we should just call it the C3. Cricket Chat Crafters, the C3. The C3 Conference. Hey, you, will you please stop it? Come over here. Sorry, he's into something. Good morning, David. Nice to see you. So um, this is, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen this this company. It's called SVG Cuts. I love it. I actually love her files more than even Laurie Whitlock files. And um, she actually, uh, her name is Mary, and she's been designing for a very long time. And I think she got her start through, um, sort of got her fame, I should say, through Martha Stewart. She, hi Guadalupe, she, um, she had, uh, Martha Stewart had this sort of, uh, I don't know what it was called. It was like American Crafter or something like that. It was some sort of contest. And she won uh, a contest for uh, this amazing, I think it's the carousel or possibly the Ferris wheel. And um, she makes, not only does she make these super, super intricate um, 3D SVGs, but she's like the queen of the intricate box card and one of, and she sells in a kit like, um, like dreaming tree, but she combines all of her files. So you only have to import one SVG, which is a huge difference from say dreaming tree. It's the same sort of thing as Lori Whitlock does. So, um, I'm hoping that dreaming tree will catch on that people just don't like to upload like 20 svgs just to make uh to make one file so uh, hopefully that will happen hey listen you can you not um and so she's really wonderful she had a baby last year and so she hasn't been coming out with as many files but that's okay because she has a lot of files no, this is not a net where we got the perpetual calendar. Um, we got the perpetual calendar from a place called simplycraftysvgs.com. This is svgcuts.com. Her name is Mary, and if you go through, she this is her website, svgcuts.com. If you go through, she has an enormous amount of um, files. This is the one that we're going to focus on today. This is, so she sells things in groups and also individually. And the great thing that she does is she gives you like this. This is like, um, it's a PDF. You don't have to print it, but you get it with any purchase. And um, this, and she names the grouping. So kind of like Dreaming Tree does. So this one here is called Green Thumb and includes this uh, Forsythia 
which is in like a, a milk jug. We're going to make that this morning. Includes this hummingbird box card, which we're also making this morning. But it also includes these water boots and a poppy, a very large poppy that hangs on the wall. I think it's a poppy, even though she cut it in pink. I, I think I would have cut it in red. Maybe I'll do that later. And then this a watering can. It's a 3D watering can. I'm wondering, um, I love her files too, Susan. <laughs> I'm wondering if you guys want to learn how to do some of these large uh, SVGs. She has things like... Um, like these very large monarch butterfly files. She has these beautiful 3D stars that I made for 4th of July. So you guys uh, let me know if you want to do some of these. Remember last year, if you were around here last year, um, we did the lighthouse and the lighthouse keepers. Um, home that's this is where they came from so at any rate this is uh where now i want to just kind of mention that this is a paid uh you have to pay for this okay um there to be honest her her files are so unique that um that i don't know anybody else doing it um, I, I don't know anybody else doing this kind of thing. I wish that Cricut would get there, but you know, they're just not there yet. So, um, so for now, I'm going to show you how to um, upload her files. So you, I can't give you these files because that's against the law. Um, and so I also want you to support a, um, another crafter too. So if you want to purchase this, you can buy them separately so we're doing this file this is the hummingbird file and then we're doing this one which is the like milk jug I'm calling it a milk jug with a forsythia inside two branches of forsythia it's so beautiful and um I want to show you how to do this I also um I also want to play around a little bit with some inking especially on the hummingbird one because it's very subtle plain maybe you might call it and um it's it's basically the the hummingbird is uh is you know going for the nectar inside of this flower and the flower is just all of these little flaps and it can be a little confusing and i'm going to show you how to put this together because it was confusing for me um and the wonderful thing about this and even the other one is that they're actually mailable. They're box cards. Now, I think they're beautiful um, decorations, so I I'm just going to put them out as decorations or give them to people that I like and um, and just show you that. But I think this would actually be even better with a little bit of inking. So today I'm going to try my hand at using this alcohol pearl ink called Intrigue. That's from the um from the Ranger ink. And guess what I got? My little stampy thing with uh with the it's got like a little felt and velcro end here. This is from Ranger Ink, I think. It reminds me of the old fashioned stamp and the velcro's on here. I suppose you could fashion something yourself even, but you you put these little pieces of felt on here and then you can use this as sort of like a stamper to just give subtle highlights to um to your project. So I want to show you how to do that. You can, if you don't have one of these, you can also use one of these. It's just a cosmetic sponge wedge. You can buy this at any pharmacy um, and like department store like Target. And I think mine came from Walmart. They might've come from Walmart, but um, usually can get a big old bag, which is what I have here. Big old bag. They're, this one here is called Swispers. Anyway, they're cosmetic wedges and they're perfect for blending and also spreading out these alcohol inks. Um, and that's what I'm finding out about the alcohol inks is that a little goes a really long way with these things. And um, 
and I'm going to try it out so you guys can learn from me and see if it's something you want to try. Oh, good. Di Dollar Tree also has the makeup sponges as well. So let's get started. I, um, I wanted to show you. So you have to purchase this file. So then we would go to, let's go to um, Design Space and start from scratch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Uploads. You see that? There's Uploads. And um, what comes up if you have been... Um, uh, if you've been crafting for a while with outside SVGs, you will see that you have this little library and, um, this library actually for me has 1300 images in it. And that's not even all of them because sometimes I just delete them. But, um, if you want, it's sort of a free, uh, space to store your SVGs um, that you've uploaded. I really, I don't like to store too, too many of them. What did you get into? Oh, he's got ribbon. <laughs> so the files from SVG cuts. So um, what happens is once you purchase the SVG, it downloads or you download it to your computer. Now, every computer, all the computers are different. I'm working on a Mac. So mine unzips and comes into my download file. I don't know if Windows does that. and You might have to unzip it uh, on your own, okay? And the other day I showed you how to do this on an iPad. This is the same thing, only doing it on um, a Macintosh, like a desktop computer, right? So we're going to hit this green button that says upload image. And you can drag and drop files uh, if you want to. So it, when people ask about that, basically it means if you make this smaller and you open up your, uh, like say your download files, right, like this. And I want to make this so that you guys can see both. All right. So here's my um, download file. So you can go to, actually, I have this um, in documents. So I'm going to go to SVG cuts, which is my uh, file folder for uh, that, this company. And um, let's see, it's called Green Thumb. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's the green thumb SVG cut. So when I open it, there's the SVG files. Let me open this slightly bigger so you can see what I'm talking about. And you'll see when I downloaded this, you're going to get, this is a PDF. That's what this is. And I recommend either opening it on your screen or, um, or uh, printing it out. I'm a, I'm an old school printer, print it out kind of fella person. So um, I always print it out because it's really useful. It does give you some uh, in, uh, sizing and also tells you kind of what colors and all of that that you need to use. And that's what this is. And then this is the JPEG. It's just the picture of the entire grouping. And then you'll see a folder that says SVG files. So we're going to um, open that folder and let's start with the floral pale card. You'll see that there are individual, just like on a dreaming tree file, there are individual SVGs here, branches, card base, envelopes. But you also see that there's another uh, file folder called extras. When you click on extras, you'll find... Um, among other things, sometimes she puts other things in here, but you'll find two files. You'll get the entire floral pale box card separated dot SVG or the entire floral pale box card dot SVG. Now, why does she do those two different things? The, the one, if you have a joy, so listen up if you have a joy and you want to use um, outside box, outside SVGs, this is, um, these files can all be cut on, um, on your joy, but you need to import them correctly. And so if I were going to import the, um, this 
floral pale for my joy, I'm going to choose the separated SVG over the regular. Now, what that's going to do is going to bring every piece of this file, and there's a lot of them, um, but it's going to be it's going to be a whole like grouping, but they're not going to be attached um, like by color. And so let's go ahead and take that one. And I am just going to drag and drop right here. Okay, and let me just make this smaller. Now it is rather small, so let's make this bigger so you can see. It is rather small because um, there's an envelope here. If you're a Joy user, you won't be able to cut the envelope, but um, you could use that as a template if you want to cut, like, print it on your printer. You could do that, but we're going to bring it in anyway. So this is it, and we're going to upload. Okay, so now here it sits, and here's also the hummingbird. I know it's kind of small, but um, when we're going to start on this, we're just going to grab both of these files, or you can do these individually. That's up to you, but I'm going to grab both of these files and pull them into my canvas. Now, there are some things you've got to do with these that come in and they're, they are grouped together, but they're not um, like attached to one another. That's what's really important about um, having files that are separated. They're grouped, but they're separated. That's really important for the joy, especially when you have something that has a lot of the same color. Now this here if it came in as one file, would be impossible to cut on the joy. Um, but if you bring it in separated, it's going to be easy as long as all of the pieces, and it, unfortunately in this case, the only thing that won't cut on the joy is the envelope. So what we're going to do is ungroup it and um, we're going to hide the envelope, okay? But see how these are all independent? These could all get cut on the joy, which is perfect. And you could definitely cut these files um, if you look, this, the hummingbird and everything, everything is separated, okay? So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna ungroup it and get rid of the envelope just so that you know. Now, we've done this before. With outside SVGs, you do need to make sure that you're attaching things such as writing or uh, such as cut marks that, that are used as score lines. Remember that... Um, when you have outside designers, they generally will use something called a dashed cut line as um, as a substitute for score lines. She, uh, Mary, sometimes will also give you those solid lines, but um, it's not on all her her files. So, um, but what you want to do is go through every piece here and make sure. And in this particular hummingbird case, you really need to go through every single piece because even this part, which is the wings, has a cut here, and that really kind of made me. I was like, what is this about? And um, so you do need to attach this so that it will cut and you can put it on your um, on your hummingbird. And even here with the wings, this is an attached part of the file, okay? So we're gonna go through and we're going to click on all of those pieces that, um, and you can tell if they are need to be attached because, for instance, this is one of the leaves, right? And if you look over here, which let me move over a little tiny bit. So if you move over here, you can see that this piece, which is highlighted, has three um, operations, three little things it's going to do all in one. But unless you attach it, it's going to stay separated and you will end up with kind of weird files that, I'm sorry, weird mats that have things like the one or the dash cut line. So you have to go through every single one of them and attach them. It's just something you got to do with these files. So that's what I'm doing is I am, now one of the things I will mention up about this particular file that I think is really funny is that this one on this one here, right? 
So let's arrange this to the back so you can see what I mean. So this is important because this piece has a number four on the left and a number one on the right. And in my file, the one is not attached. So I am going to um, group this together and make sure I get that one in there and attach because I need to know that one is there. When we put this together, you'll see that I have written in the one because um, for some reason I forgot to attach that part. So here I am, I'm putting all of these and um, attaching them all. And you can double check and see if you've done all the attachments by looking at I want to just make sure that I have done them all because I'm talking a lot, but looking over here to the right and seeing it says attach, attach, attach. Yep, we're getting there, attached, attached. So there's quite a few attached files here. And um, if you didn't do something or it doesn't need to be attached, um, you would see that it's just just its own thing. So only out of this grouping, there's only a couple pieces that don't have to be attached. Even this is attached, even the, the hummingbird base. I think this is this and these little pieces are the only things that don't need attaching. So um, once you do all of that, you can then, if you're especially if you're working with two files, you can then um, just kind of group them together just to make things easier. That's kind of what I do. All right. So, um, the same holds true. Oops. I hope I didn't. All right. The same holds true for the pail, only it's a lot less of the attaching. In fact, the pail has these little pieces here, and then these are the only two attached features that are there. So all you need to do is attach those two. Okay. Now I will tell you that, um, in both of these, you may have to um, you may have to make the the size a smidge smaller um, on one piece. And if that is the case, if you're cutting on the joy, okay, what I would recommend is that stacking technique that I've told you about, where you're just going to stack everything like this, and then um, then you can make it smaller, okay. And actually, I'm going to move these over. So this is so that uh, it will fit on your um, on your joy mat. And these are cut on the mat. So now I've I've done that where um, it's almost ex almost the uh, size that I want. But I'm not going to cut on the joy today. So, but just so you know, if you are going to cut on the joy, that's what that's what you would do. Now these cut out the regular way as any files do. I don't need to show you how they cut out. However, it especially with this pale one, it has a lot of little pieces. So first, th this is that one piece. Let me make it bigger. So um, so there's the pail, and the pail's pretty self-explanatory. But this is where you're going to be doing a lot of gluing. So it has these two branches that are sort of like cut, but they're attached to one another. And then we're going to take each and every one of these cut out um, flowers and just sort of glue them on to, there's kind of like a little knob or a nub in there. And so we're just going to do that and also put on the leaves. So um, there's a lot of gluing. If you're, if you're someone who likes to glue, this is a great process project for you. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. But there are a lot of small pieces too, which actually makes it fun on the joy. On a larger machine, sometimes those smaller pieces, especially if you're using like a big piece of paper, they can um, get kind of lost. That's why I like my joy. So all right. Um, so I'm not going to cut this out because I really want to spend a lot of time on assembly. So I'm going to move you down and we can have a look at how to put these together. Okay. So again, this is, um, this is just my workspace and, um, we're going to be putting together this, which is the hummingbird, um, box card. And you see that it does fold and you might have to 
push some of these flaps up or down if you want to get it into an envelope, right? But it does fold and it opens up to make it seem like that hummingbird um, is drinking the nectar inside of the flower. And it is, this is a, a look from the bottom. There, This is a little bit hard to put together, so I'm going to take my time with it so you can see. Um, and uh, so let's have a look. I have a, a bunch of the pieces here. Now, one of the things that... Um, that I started thinking about with this file is, boy, it would look kind of nice if some of these petals were sort of tipped with a, a contrasting pink. So um, that's what I decided to do today for this one. And I'm just taking, this is a little piece of um, scrap paper, obviously. And um, I'm going to take some of this alcohol ink. It's a pearl. It's called Intrigue. And you can tell from the outside that it's sort of pink and let me just show you here are my little I suppose I could do I could have done either enchanted or intrigue but I'm gonna try the um maybe I will try the enchanted because I think that that would look good too so I'm going to get out my box of inks sorry I don't want to break my nails from this but Oh, there we go. Ugh. Ooh, this is really tight. Which I suppose is good, but might break my nails. So I'm going to choose, let's get the enchanted one too. Now with the pearls, you have to make sure that they're really shaken well. They're mixed up because there's the pearl fixative on the bottom and it's just kind of like a mica powder and it does not um it does not mix, okay? So it's kind of like a nail polish, a bottle of nail polish, or even a spray can. You're going to need to mix it so that you don't see any of that pearl on the bottom and it will stay mixed you know, until you're done type of thing. So I would do the same with that as well. So let me just move all of these pieces. All of these pieces can be inked and are part of the project, okay? So um, what we can do is we can either put the glue, the glue, I keep calling it glue, the ink on the bottom of this, just drop a few drops on there and use our little paper to make sure that it's on there. Um, and then what we can do is sort of, just sort of uh, take it and I'm just pulling it along here and it's giving it a shiny look. Now you guys are gonna do this better than me because I am not, someone that normally inks their projects, but I know there are some of you that do this all the time. And um, this is a way to do it with the alcohol inks. I Can you tell I'm sort of hooked on the alcohol inks? You can do it on the other side as well. And I, I can just do this. You can also do this with the sponge, put it on here or put it on there and sort of dab it. Okay. Now you can do this also with ink pads. Whoops. Look what I did. I messed up because I used this and it had blue. And so there you go. I messed it up, but that's okay. We'll just keep going on. Oh, well, you know, um, this is art. That's what I learned last night is that, you know, you sort of art. You can't, you just, you can't control it, right? So we'd just go along and we would dab on this, um, like this, you might have to replace it a little bit. Now, listen, there are other ways that you can do this. You don't have to use the alcohol ink um, to do it. You can, if you have uh, these things, ink pads, or even if you have blendable um blendable uh, pens, you could do it. Now, you could either like pounce this on here and do it like this, you see? 
or you can use your makeup sponge and sort of dab it on like this and don't be afraid to move it around and sort of soften the look like this. See? Um, I happen to like this color because it's got that shine to it, but I, there's probably ink pads that have a shine like that as well. So you would go through and you would ink all of these. Um, I'm probably going a little overboard here because most people just ink like around the edge like this. So you do you. You do whatever works for you. And um, obviously I would avoid the hummingbird part. We're gonna put the hummingbird, but this is what we would do. I'm not gonna do the entire um, the entire grouping of them because there's quite a few. And then I wanna show you, I wanna take the time to show you how to put this together. Okay, so that's how you ink. And that's a little um, a little inking thing. Could you emboss it? Um, a dry emboss, maybe? Uh, if you did the heat emboss, I suppose you could do that if you had embossing pen, okay? Um, I We are gonna be working on embossing, by the way, coming up. I just have to get all my embossing stuff from the vault. Okay, so here are all the pieces, and you can see that I wrote my numbers in so you could see what I'm what I was talking about so each almost every single piece and there's what one two three four five six seven seven pieces one two three yeah there's seven pieces on this on this folder which is a lot and you'll notice that she actually has two ones and two threes and two twos and you might be thinking oh no what am i doing here well the twos and ones and threes that have this little hole punched out are actually your inserts okay so if it has a little hole punched out you're going to kind of put those aside those are your inserts and what remains are your um outside piece right? And actually, this is the front, even though it says a four here, because this is the first um, corner tab, okay? So this one here is our second one because it has the number two here, and we are going to attach it like this, and then we're going to take the two and attach it to the third piece, and then this is the fourth piece. It does not have a number on it. Okay, so we can do a couple of things when, before we put the box together, though, to make it a little bit easier for us. First is we can um, curl a little bit of these, uh, these petals to give it a little bit of life and make it look more realistic. And we've done a lot of curling before using our... Um, using our little scraper. And so what you wanna consider here is that these are going to be folded. You'll see that there are the dash cut lines along here. They're gonna be folded. So this is going to be facing down like this. And so you want to curl your edges so that they're going to be realistically looking if you I suppose you could do it this way and it's sort of up to you but for me I wanted to open up the flower a little bit so I curled them out and made sure that I um I sort of folded at that tab okay same thing here um and I'm just doing that and I can fuss with it later, do some fluffing later, but um, but I just kind of wanted you to see what I'm talking about here. And it really does give the end product quite a nice um, look. However, this last one, I probably wouldn't uh, do anything to simply because, and you can see here, this piece is going to go on the back for our um, greeting, if we wanna put a greeting there, okay?
So don't, don't fluff that one. So then we're going to glue, right? So now we're going to glue together the box and we're going to put a little bit on this tab that says one. And then we're going to attach the tab that says two, okay? Make sure you're doing it right here at the, um, right at that edge because you want it to be able to fold and go into an envelope if that's what you, you know, want to do if you want to send it to somebody. Then we're going to put two here and that's getting attached to wait, this one, which is the third piece. See, there's a three. Oops. I'll make sure I'm in the camera. Hold on. Okay. So two goes into three like this. And you can do this flat. Of course you can do it flat and just make sure you fold it all of your tabs over so that it, when you put it together, it will look like a box. Cause this essentially is a box card. Now um, it doesn't sort of look like the average box card, but it still folds flat for mailing, which makes it a box card, right? So there are the four pieces, and before I close it up, I'm going to take my little piece, is double-sided, so I think this one I will do um, on this side, and I'm just going to cover the sides with these pieces. However, I'm not going to put one on this side, because that's where our piece is going, the green piece is going, okay? So here we go. Have I lost you guys? I hope I haven't lost you. Um, this is probably a little more advanced than some of you uh, that are new are used to, but that's okay. You will get there, okay? Um, it's not It's not something, A, you have to try right now. You might be content in just sort of watching it. Okay, and um, and that's okay too. So this is actually the back piece. You will see here, it's sort of uh, the back piece. It looks like this. And it's going to go on here. And just so you can see, this is what it, it's gonna like sort of uh, overlap. So you can see a little bit of it from the front of the card. I'm just gonna put some glue here and lay it in there. Okay, so now the outside of the box is pretty much done. All we have to do is fold it and put glue here on this corner, on this tab, and close up our box. Now this should be flat like this. So if it's not, you need to go back and fix it because, okay, you're not lost. Okay, good. You need to make sure that you're going to be able to open it like this. It's a box, okay? There you go. So this is the outside of the, um, it's okay, Mary Jane. You don't have to be there. Um, you can just watch, right, and learn. Just like last night, I was watching and learning from Pascal, the artist. Um, you can watch and learn um, on this as well. Okay, so all we have to do now is put together our hummingbird. So this is the piece that the hummingbird's going to do. It's number two with the little hole stamped in it. And our hummingbird is just a few features. So he is the, I cut it out. I know they're sort of grayish but I cut it out from this blue and I think there are a lot of green in it because here is um, this uh, wing and here is the other wing I hope I'm putting it on correctly I just want to just tuck there okay I would hide this this part of the wing underneath the body of the of the um, hummingbird just because I think it's supposed to represent the um, the hummingbird of what is that called a wing okay all right Rita um, the hummingbird wings on the other side of the hummingbird okay so then we're going to take the body 
the, the bigger piece, the biggest piece, and just put a little bit of glue here and put it on top, right on top of that pink cutout. Okay, might have to adjust it a little bit, but there it is. And then we're going to embellish our hummingbird. So there's a couple pieces I'm seeing. I, there's one piece that I'm missing, the green part of his body. Where is it? Ugh. You see this green part of the body? I'm missing it. It's got to be here somewhere. Come on, please be nice to me today. Ah. Well, we're just going to have to pretend it's here and I will have to cut out another one. But this is the way that it goes. Just like this. And there's the body part. And then here's his throat. And actually the eye, which I dotted with black. Okay. Um, and I'm sad because I am missing not only that, but also the wings. I'm sure we'll find it when we, we kind of move along. So then let's just pretend that they're there and here are our inserts. So we have one, two, three. And in this case, I am going to start from the front. Maybe I won't. I'm going to start from the back, which, um, the back piece is not... Um, is the only piece that is not, what's the word, is not um, dotted, is not given a score thing. But I would still probably give these leaves a little bit of, you know, lift, a little bit of fullness. So here's number three with the dot cut out. And we are going to put it here. I'm going to put glue on either side of these tabs and then I'm going to put it on the inside edge either side for um for our box. That's so that it will fold. Okay? All right, here we go. Now listen, if these are really fun for you and you really like making them, I have hundreds of files like this, like really advanced, but I I do like to try to keep things sort of easy too. So if it's something that you want to see more of, I can start to pepper them in a little bit and, and uh, perhaps, I don't know, perhaps we can just sort of have a certain day that we're doing an advanced file or something or any ideas that you might have. So here's number two, our incomplete hummingbird. And we're going to put it in. Now, look, it's going to go, I'm going to give you sort of a top down look. You see, there is the, there are the tabs right here. Okay. And they're going to go flush with the, the f number three front. You see that? Now, how do I know how to do that? It's because when you fold it like this, you need for them to fold all the way. You need it to be, you need it to be um, level in the, and in the exact same place as the left is. So the right needs to be in the exact same place as the right. You see that? So now I can fold this and still get it into my envelope. Now, sometimes when you're doing it, just like right now, the, um, the tab hasn't fully stuck yet. So that's a good thing. Um, and so it allows you to sort of make sure you have it. And usually when I'm making a box card, I fold it both ways as I add each one of the inserts so that I know I'm still able to get this into a mailer. Um, so here is our last one. Number one, we're going to put that glue here. Uh, and that's what I like to use glue and not like say double stick tape um, or hot glue. I don't think I would ever use hot glue, but you know, something that is still, I have a little bit of wiggle room in there. Okay. So let's hold that. And I did forget to curl these two. 
So I'm gonna, I might have to come back when that glue is set. All right, so essentially that's done. Now I'm so sorry that I don't have the full uh, hummingbird to give you the look. He's missing his, his body and the little red throat and the eye and the bottom <laughs> feathers. But this essentially is completed. Um, and you'll see that it looks real pretty. And here is what we did with the uh, the stamping. And also, look, we can close it just like that and get it into the envelope, okay? And let me just show you on the back. There is a piece that I did not cut out that's just a circle piece that you can put here and you could stamp on it like Happy Spring or Happy Birthday or something if you're going to give this to someone. Or you can sign it with your name and use it as a decoration. I happen to <laughs> like this completely completed one better. So I'm going to show you that one. So that is the completed hum hummingbird. Right? Nice. I love it. I love it. All right, let's go on to the floral pail. We're going to put these away because we don't really need them. So the floral pail is pretty easy. And actually, I feel badly because I did I already cut these and put, I cut them out and put them together because it's really not that hard. That's not the part that I want to show you. So the floor pail is just two pieces and you glue, glue it here at the spout. And let me just see, show you on the bottom. So this is a box card. See, it's shaped like a box and um, it folds flat and you're going to glue each piece at the tabs. There's really nothing to making this part of the box card. There are these pieces that go on the top and you can ink these if you wanted to. I kept them plain. Um, and look here, see there are two tabs that have closed this up. And then at the spout, you'll see that the spout is glued. That's it. And there's only one little handle on there. Okay. So that's what I have here. And I put them all together and I, I was like, duh, that was stupid Rita <laughs> to do that. But, um, hmm, I wasn't thinking straight. Okay. So what we have next for this is all of these for this, for Cynthia. I always say for Cynthia, but it's for Cynthia. And um, I just have a little hard time with my lisp uh, saying it. Anyway, there are all of these flowers and all of these, uh, all of these leaves that need to be worked onto our pieces. The, there are two pieces here. They kind of look alike. Um, so do have to sort of separate them. I have three sets. So let's just take out one set. So here is one and here is the other. Put these aside. So here they are. And you'll notice that they are cut at the bottom. That's so that they can go into the jug and still fold flat because it's a box card. And you'll notice that this one here has like sort of a um, curve to it. And this one does not. That's because the, of the spout. So when we get this all decorated, we are going to glue them actually inside edge, just like this, you see? And then the other one is going to go in the back the same way. But we need to decorate them first because it would be too hard to do it without having a decorated um flower thing. So here's the thing about Forsythia is, is that they're so small, it's a little bit hard to represent them in paper. And um, I don't know if you've ever seen them, but they are just so beautiful. And um, my neighbor has a whole row of them. I just love them. Love to see them every year. And then once they're done blooming, the a green leaves start coming on. So we're going to start with the green leaves. And there are two... <laughs> No, okay. That's Benji. He doesn't usually bark. Okay, you. So I'm going to put... I don't know why he's barking. So sorry. Oh, 
mailman's here. <laughs> Typical. You guys are so um, predictable. So I'm just dotting my glue here all around, and I'm going to take my little pieces. Now, this might be something you want to use this thing for that you all got, or a lot of you got. Um, it's called Quick Stick, and it was on sale at Amazon, um, and it might help you with putting these little pieces on. Um, you might also want to check out the picture of this. That's why she provides it. So you can kind of see about placement. But pretty much, I think anything you come up with will work. And so don't stress about it too, too much. And then the, as far as the, the flowers go, you could, if you wanted to, give them a little bit of a tiny bit of a lift there and just start placing them in all the different places because that's what they are they're like a really brown branch and then it's just covered in the flowers it's really interesting in these almost like x-shaped flowers so that's what we're going to do i'm just putting little dots of glue all on these pieces mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, and I'm going to take my little flowers, and some of them are three, and some of them are the four, and I'm just going to place them, and I can just do this with my nail to give them a little bit of oomph if I want to, and remember, I can play with these uh, afterwards, fluff them up and everything, but you have to get most of them on there first, so that's what I'm doing. There's another one of her files that I love, and um, it's a box card as well, and it's with cherry blossoms, and that cherry, those cherry blossoms are so small, and I remember just like, oh, I mean, like 50 pieces of these little pink cherry blossoms that are, um, that are, have to be placed onto the box card. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I cannot, Paralita. Right now, the way that the mystery boxes are going is that um, if you find them, and and I think people did find them, they you can post in my group that you found them, but I'm not allowed to um, notify you even after the fact. Um, what's in the box because they're trying to figure out the best way for them to circulate them. That's temporary. They'll come up with a different plan, but so many people have been disappointed in um, the way the mystery boxes get sort of distributed and advertised that they've asked us as product experts and we're the only ones that have in the past or well in the recent past that actually get um that get a sort of credit for um for a sale of a box so so they know that it's really important to you guys, and but it's also really important that you not be disappointed. And so they're trying to come up with a way to make it easier on the service. What happened before was everybody was, you know, they'd find out about it because we would we would make these announcements and then everybody would clamor to the site and it would bring the site to its knees. And um, they didn't know how to deal with that. And then people get disappointed. It wasn't, um, you know, they'd have a certain way of populating it so that it would appear as if it were sold out for, um, and it wasn't because they had to repopulate the inventory. It just was a big old mess. So um, they've asked us for now to just uh, let it be. And the only mystery boxes right now that I can tell you about are the digital ones because they won't have such a run on um, on the mystery boxes, okay? Um, so, so here we are putting all of these. What's not working? Somebody's saying something's not working. Putting all of these little flowers on there. It probably is going to get stuck to my work surface. 
<laughs> yeah. And um, you just need to be patient with this part of the process. And again, I'm just like giving these, these little pieces um, a little tiny bit of like lift on the edges. And you'll notice that these crosses are actually, there's two different styles and then there's this three piece one. So, um, so just kind of mix them up a little bit here and there. I would probably put the smaller ones at the top. I don't know why. It just seems to me like that's the right thing to do. If you wanted to, you could come back maybe with uh, like a stickles, which is liquid glitter glue, or uh, maybe you have some tiny, tiny gems that you want to put there inside of the uh, flowers. You could do that too. Uh, kind of not my thing, but I've seen people do it. And okay, so Let's pretend because uh, it's almost 10 o'clock. So let me see. Hey, today I get my first vaccination shot uh, down at the Terigian Center, which is our senior center. So excited because um, when I signed up, I w had to wait until the uh, second week in May. And then they came along and said, hey, you can sign up. So I grabbed that spot and I get to have it before the end of April, which is great. Um, hope you're all like trying to get your shots. Some of you have already got your shots. So that's wonderful. I think it's really important to follow what the CDC is saying. Okay, I'm just going to put a few leaves here. And... Just kind of break up that yellow. But to be honest, when you see a forsythia in bloom, it is just such a shock of yellow that it wouldn't be wrong if you put all the all the yellow there and very little um, green. Okay, so here is the box. Even though it doesn't look like a box, it looks like a milk jug. But here is the box, and we are going to... Whoop, it's kind of glued shut here. All right, Rita, this one's glue shut. So let's open this one instead. Okay. So this is our front piece. We still have to do that back piece, but I want to show you in case somebody, you know, has to sign off. I'm going to put the glue on the front of this piece. And I am going to nestle it, sort of work it down. Be patient with this part of the process. But you see, you can't see that, that curved part. And make sure that you are pressing in well. And there you go. Just like that. Of course, I can't open it again, but there is the front piece. So to do the back piece, I, I'm torn on the back piece. I, I Like, should you put the flowers in the front of it? And I'm thinking, yeah, but um, you might change your mind and put them on the back. But this is the way that it's going to go in. It's going to go in here. And this piece actually goes this side, you see? So I'm going to put the flowers on the front of it. All right. Um, let me talk to you about tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday, yes? And what do we do on Fridays? We do a 3D project. And um, this I wouldn't consider to be a 3D project. This is more of a card, an advanced card, but it's, it's a card. We are going to actually make a peony gift box from Dreaming Tree tomorrow. It's one of my absolute favorite dreams dreaming tree files it's older now um i think it's like at least five years old but it um it's it's a beautiful rendition of a peony and also um with this gorgeous like i think it's a pentagram penta Gone, or it might be a hexagon uh, style box. Very pretty. Would make an 
excellent gift box for a mom. You can buy it separately. I did post the link on um on my page and it's $2.99 uh to buy it and I did post a link so check that out and I will also post the link inside of the um inside the description of the video once I get done with the live. So um, it's really beautiful and uh, I just really love it. And I've actually given it as a gift to many people. It has beautiful like uh, foil that looks like the ribbon and stuff. Really nice. So, um, so we're going to be doing that tomorrow. And then Saturday night for date night, we are going to be working on hydrangeas there are two different files one is free and available um on cricut design space and that is actually from leah griffith and we're going to use it to make a hydrangea ball which is basically a styrofoam ball that has covered in hydrangea petals i've already cut out quite a few of the hydrangea petals and then there's another file that is uh it is hydrangeas in a pot and it uses like half of a styrofoam so if you are at michael's and you want to um attack a hydrangea project which is very vexing because hydrangeas though beautiful are very difficult to recreate um in paper so if you want to try this out you're going to need a, i would say small ish like i forget that the size i can look up and see what size it is but a smallish styrofoam ball that um you can you can just cut it in half with um with a serrated knife that's what i've done and um the one from dreamy tree has like a little it has actually has a tray that um each pot also has like the letters m o m to spell mom but you don't have to cut it out for that it can just be a really pretty um hydrangea tray i can just show you at the end here what i'm talking about if it's if this if i sound all foreign um and the other thing is uh we have established um, I talked with Dawn, actually. We have established a Zoom, and I'm going to need to get with you, Lynn, but we have established a date for the Zoom call for this coming month, which is May, because so May is starts, what, Saturday? Yeah. Um, so because May starts Saturday, I thought it was too soon to have the Zoom call. So we're going to have the Zoom call the following Saturday night. And um, that is going to be... Uh, I don't know what the th the theme is, and I do know, though, we've got to um, mix it up a little bit because I want for everybody to be able to win some of our prizes, and we'll probably also be launching the Joy giveaway for May um, right before that, so we can talk about that, and um, we can do some sort of giveaway. I'm going to have to come up with, because we still, once we give away the joy, we still have other giveaways to do, and we have been, the last two times, we've been, um, we've been giving away for best costume, <laughs> um, and so, but we got to change that up, because the Canadians are, are whipping our butts, and uh, so we need to come up with a different plan for for the giveaways, right? So um, let's see. There, let's just say that we're done with this one. I probably could put one more, one more. Well, maybe I could put more on, but okay, whatever, Rita. So um, here we go. So then what we're going to do here with this one is we're going to put the glue on this side, okay? And because it's going to lay against the back of the pitcher. See that? So again, we got to sort of get it in there, get both pieces in there. I suppose you could kind of fold it like this, but it's, it's a little bit much, you know, have to 
get your fingers in there and really get it in there. But once you do, the end result is a really interesting and fabulous card. And still, it folds flat. Isn't that great? I just love this. I love this, and I love the hummingbird. And I hope that you love them, too. And if you're going to try them, I will give you a link to them. But it's called Green Thumb. It's by SBG Cuts. I'm going to just bring you back up here for just a second so I can show you the file that we'll be doing tomorrow for 3D Friday. And that is on... Um, oh, by the way, this is Renee's, um, Renee's rendition of the flower we did yesterday in tissue paper, uh, including tissue paper leaves. Didn't she do a fabulous job? She did cut out the stamen in cardstock, but I love this peony, um, and she did such a great job of it. She wasn't happy with it, but, you know, we're our worst critics, I think. I think it looks really good. So, okay, let's go to... Dreaming Tree, which they are located at 3dsvg.com, and we are just simply going to search for, just type in hi, no, peony, sorry, type in peony, and there it is, that's the peony box, it has a giant peony on the top that's all inked all around, and you can't see the box, but uh, or at least not fully the box, but it is gorgeous and it just comes out super wonderfully. And so we're going to do that tomorrow. I will put the link again. And the, um, the second of the, um, hydrangea projects that we'll do on Saturday night is this one. It's called the Hydrangea Tray SVG. You don't need to purchase these. So if if these are things you just want to see them us doing, sort of like last night, if you just wanted to come and watch, you could do that. And, um, and, and that's fine. We would just enjoy your company. So don't feel obligated to buy them. But if you want to attack these and you want to learn how to do them, then we are going to take care of doing those, uh, Friday and then on Saturday. Okay. And I will post the links. All right. So thank you everybody for coming today. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you get some crafting in. We'll see you again tomorrow at 9 o'clock for Cricut Chat. And don't forget, you can catch all the replays, all of that, um, on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And I have started, if you're a Patreon patron, I have started kind of populating um, that site with some information and videos, but I want to hear from you about um, what you'd like to see there. If you just want to have, say, files there that are exclusive files, we can do that. Um, or just a place to corral all the files would be good. So just let me know what you'd like to do and um, I will do it for you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Thank you, uh, Lori. Have a great day, everyone. Hi, Patricia. How are you? Hi, Christine. So we'll see you all again tomorrow. Lynn, we have to get together, okay? Thanks, Anna Maria. All right, everyone. Take care. Bye.